Hi, I'm Rebecca Chaplin. I am a car journalist, but I mainly write about things like car dealers, auctions, buying and selling. So today for this Motors in the Know video, I'm gonna be answering some of your questions about what to do when buying a car. So first up, I've got, hi Rebecca, do you have any tips on what not to do or say when you're at a dealership? So my advice, like most things in life, is just to be yourself. Some people feel like they're not a car expert, but they need to be a car expert, and other people feel like they are a car expert, and therefore they need to tell the dealership how much they know about the car. Really, less is more when it comes to showing off how much you know. You might have done your research inside out, and that is great, but you're basically selling the car for the dealer if you do that. Let them tell you what you need to know about the car and ask the important questions. Decide what is really important for you and ask them, make sure you ask those questions. Don't worry about whether they're going to judge you for it. At the end of the day, you're the one that's got to live with this car for the next three, four years, however long you decide to keep it for. Um, the one thing I would say is don't show up if you can't afford the car. A lot of cars these days don't go for anything less than what they're advertised for so if you are nowhere near that price or even know you can't get to that price just tell the dealer up front and they will probably tell you that that's not an option then don't go in test drive a car ask them all the questions and then tell them that you can't afford it that is not going to put you in a good position with finding a car moving forwards next up i've got i'm going to an independent dealership next week and i was wondering what checks you would recommend doing on a vehicle before deciding whether or not to buy it. So this kind of comes down to how paranoid you are, and I am very paranoid when it comes to buying um, used cars or any car, just paranoid. Um, so before you turn up at the dealership, what I would do is do an MOT check, um, which you can do on any vehicle online, and it will tell you um, when, when that car was last MOT'd, when it's due its next MOT, and when it, if it failed, what it failed on, and all those sort of things. So if you, check it and you find that it was MOT'd in the, like, the last couple of weeks, that dealer has probably done that when it's come into stock and that's great news. Um, if it was done slightly before that, it could be that it was it was done before it came into stock, but MOTs are really only valid on the day that they're done. So it just means you wanna be a little bit more cautious about um, what's going on with the vehicle. So when you turn up, um, ask the dealer, dealer when it whether it's been serviced and what that service actually means. For some dealers, a service will mean just changing the oils. For others, it will mean they've checked the brakes, replaced any pads that are worn down, like all those really important safety things, and that can make a massive difference. Um, I mean, for your peace of mind, but just generally for your safety when it comes to owning the car. Check things like tires, check the tread depth, because not only is that a safety thing, but if it's too low and you then have to replace all the tires when it comes around to MOT, then, or even get caught out by the police, that can be kind of pretty pricey. Um, fix to do. Um, something that is always worth doing is um, a HPI check or equivalent. You can get these things through like the RAC, loads of different companies, um, and you just put the details in. It will cost you £5 to £10 to £15, depending on the level of check you go for, but that will tell you things like whether there's outstanding finance on the vehicle, which can be a little bit tricky, but it's worth just flagging with the dealer because they might already be aware and they might be in the process of getting rid of it. It doesn't happen automatically. And um, another one that, because I'm really paranoid, um, I do a V check, which will tell you if that car's been written off. Some other services don't always pick this up, but V check um, has much more kind of detailed um, data on whether that car has been written off or damaged, which is an issue when it comes to insuring stuff and also just for your peace of mind. No, there's a big difference between having a car that's been perfect its whole life and a car that's been had its front end ripped off and has been repaired and I wouldn't want to find that out later. Uh, thirdly, I've got um, a great question. I have around £35,000 to spend on a sports car that I can enjoy on a weekend. I also want something that will go up in value. I'm currently looking at first generation Audi R8 V8. Do you have any other ideas of what I should consider and what to look out for when buying? So that is a really great place to be, but what I would be cautious of is do you have £35,000 all in or do you have £35,000 and a bit spare? Because that sort of price point, although you can get an, um, an Audi R8 V8 for that price, uh, they tend to be a little bit more leggy and 
it's a lot of them tend to be messed around with and I think that's kind of why they're at that price, price point is you get a lot of that kind of boy racer wrapped that can hide a whole world, world of sins um, but you can definitely get them within that I'd probably be looking more at 45 you can get something really really great for around 45 um, also in that price bracket, I mean, you could save yourself some money by going for an F-Type, which I surprised myself when they were actually, that's, so they're basically half price of what they were new at £28,000. Um, or if you wanted to go slightly older, you could get something like a 911. If you're looking at something to put your money into and hoping it's going to go up in value, Porsche is a good place to be. Um, and the other option, though, I do think will rise in value, but I think you'll probably have to sit on it for a bit longer, is a BMW i8. Um, if you don't remember them, they were the BMW's hybrid sports car that came out at the same time as the i3. You can get these for around £35,000 now and they're obviously not made anymore, which gives it a little bit more kind of desirability. They look like a concept car. They were right at the forefront of things changing. So I think they've got all the right ingredients to be um, a really great kind of future classic. But whether that's 10 years down the line or further, I'm not really sure at the moment. So thank you for all your questions. Uh, if you have any more, just send them into motors.co.uk and let me know how I can help you buy your next car.